this is our Talking Cafe for Mendip today. I'm Bella Lapwood, Village Agent, and I'm joined by Somerset Waste Partnership, Mickey Green, Managing Director, and Mark and Colin to accompany him. So we've got a little bit of information that Mickey's going to give us, and then we've got some questions. So anybody that's watching, if you'd like to add some more questions, please feel free in the comments box, and we'll get to them towards the end. So over to you, Mickey, for your information. Thanks, Bella. I'll just share the screen, uh, run through a quick slide, a few quick slides, show your film. But um, as Bella says, this is really about the questions. So do do feed them through. Uh, one second. Um. Right, is that? showing for you bella it may be in a minute we're having a few there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that working yeah yep. that's on there great so recycle more is what we're talking about today so coming to mendip in october and the observant amongst you will have noticed it is october so we really are almost there so um things are really starting to happen now so hopefully you've seen some um seen some of the leaflets come through your door and heard people talk about what recycle more is about which is really about enabling you to recycle more materials each week at the curbside so everything you can already recycle plus plastic pots tubs and trays food and drink cartons small household batteries and small electrical items and so with all that extra recycling we'll be giving everybody a bright blue bag and asking you to put some things in different places some of you may already have had yours because we started delivering them on monday and we'll be carrying on for the next two weeks ahead of things starting to change so the changes are very much about um those new materials each week there'll be some new routes we want to make our collection routes as efficient as possible so um, um less emissions less fuel used and that does mean there will be some different collection days so again you'll be if you haven't had it already over the next few days you'll be getting a leaflet through your post if your your collection day is changing and also we're giving you a calendar because with all that extra recycling each week the refuse collections will move from every two weeks to every three weeks if you've got a garden waste collection or a clinical waste collection that won't be changing so this really is about our kind of contribution to the to the, to the climate emergency our environmental ambitions once we've rolled it out we think it's going to reduce rubbish across somerset by 15 percent and increase our recycling rate to about 60 percent and that should save local authorities around two million a year to invest in other services it's really driven by the fact that whilst we're great in recycling at somerset actually a lot of what is in our rubbish bins at the moment could be recycled so we want to enable and encourage more people to recycle even more for those of you who've had a leaflet in the last few days you'll have seen this diagram because with the extra materials we'll be asking you to put things in different places so paper and card will be asking you to put in your black box um, from the end of october ideally keep them separate if you can please glass bottles and cartons we'll be asking you to put in your green box um, and again so what we're trying to do here is make sure we stick with that curbside sort that separation that means nearly all of our materials stay in the UK and make us one of the best um, uh, carbon savers in the country so the new bag the bright blue bag that's where all your plastic items the plastic bottles their lids plastic pots tubs and trays tins and cans aerosols foil all of that goes food waste isn't changed and we're asking you to bag small batteries and small electricals alongside um, we'll leave the bags um, if you leave them out but um, what we need to do is keep those things separate you can imagine if a battery gets caught up with a glass then it can leach its chemicals in there in the processing and cause us problems you should have all had the uh, what we call the warm-up leaflets um, early in September, just getting ready, but everybody aware that Recycle More is coming. And the pre-launch leaflet should have been landing on doorsteps last week and during this week, which is individualized to you, showing you what goes where and uh, giving you a calendar for the next year. That's what the calendar looks like. Um, you'll also be able to access that online. We know um, some people will have questions. So there's lots of support available on our website um, through customer services. We'll have extra staff available uh, going around uh, to check people are, are used to the change and available um, 
um, through customer services as well. We know that one of the things people will, some people will be worried about is whether they'll cope. I'm sure we'll, we'll have questions about that, but we'd really encourage everybody to give it a go. When we trialed it, I mean, in other areas, even people with a couple of kids in nappies have coped. But if you're worried, get in touch through My Way Services or you can call Mendip District Council and we'll find um, a way to kind of make sure you've got the right amount of capacity to, to deal with your rubbish. But remember, with all that extra kind of plastic that takes up a lot of space, your bin is going to be a lot less full. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, uh, Bella, if you are you able to show the show the film so hannah is going to share our film hopefully she'll do that now if not we'll ask some questions here we go hannah's sharing the film recycle more is coming to somerset that means we'll be collecting more recycling from your curbside every week reducing waste and helping to protect the environment It starts in Mendip this year and then the rest of the county from next year onwards. We'll send everyone details before anything changes. You'll be able to recycle plastic pots, tubs and trays, food and drinks cartons and tetra packs, small household batteries and small electrical items like kettles or toasters, as well as everything you can recycle now. When Recycle More arrives, you'll need to put different things into different containers. We'll deliver a new bright blue bag that will be for all the plastics you will be able to recycle, tins and cans, aerosols and foil. Your green box will be for glass bottles and jars, as well as cartons like Tetra Packs. Your black box will be for card and paper. Keep them separate if you can, because it helps us to recycle it. The batteries and electricals should go in a carrier bag beside your boxes. Food waste will go in your brown bin as it does now. Separating your recycling really helps us recycle more. If you're not sure what can be recycled, visit www.somersetwaste.gov.uk forward slash recycle more. Recycling more means you'll have less to throw away and a far emptier rubbish bin, so we'll be collecting it every three weeks rather than every two. Your collection day may also change. Don't worry, we'll be sending everyone their collection day calendar before the changes begin. On collection day, our crews will check each container has the right things in it before separating each material into the correct compartment on the truck. Back at the depot, the recycling is weighed, tipped and sorted. Then each material is loaded onto larger vehicles before being sent off to be recycled, the vast majority in the UK, and turned into new products and packaging. Most people in Somerset are recycling. This makes it easier for everyone to do more. If you're worried or have any questions, feel free to get in touch. We're here to help. Don't forget to look out for your bright blue bag. Remember, nothing changes until you get yours. So that's all our information, I'm presuming, that you're uh, giving today. Yeah. So we'll move on to some questions. So anybody that's watching, um, if you'd like to post some questions in the comments box, then we'll ask those as we're going along. Um, I've got a few comments and questions that I got from social media yesterday after asking some of the local groups what they were thinking. Um, so are the crews still collecting textile items, shoes and clothes at the curbside? Well, well, I answer that. Oh, I know you, oh, you <laughs> go, Mark. Sorry. No. <laughs> um, yeah, we had, we had to suspend uh, collections uh, because of the COVID uh, you know, pandemic. Um, but we're now in a big, that has had a big effect on the market globally for textiles. So we're in a position now where all, the only thing we're collecting from the curbside are what we'd call wearable clothes and shoes. So things that you might normally take to a charity shop because they could be resold. So we want where we are collecting those but anything else um i mean and always a charity shop is the best route for those sorts of items if you can but if you do want to leave them out for us then it is the wearable clothes and shoes uh other textiles we can't take unfortunately so again that's probably for a charity shop if you can 
otherwise it will end up in me normal normal rubbish right <clears throat> okay um if people have lost their collection day calendar where can they find out if that's changing um and when it will come into force They can check online or if they go to, to My Way Services um, through um, the somersetwaste.gov.uk website, then um, they'll be able to request a replacement calendar being sent, I think, um, as well as requesting if they need more containers, for example, if they're worried that they haven't got a food waste container and they're going to need one or if they haven't got a, a, a black or green box. Yeah, we, we, we will be put, online. Yeah, we will be putting the, um, the second leaflet up online so people can uh, read it online or print it but that collection day calendar that is obviously specific to each individual uh you know postcode or, or a certain area so you need to make sure you've got to write one of those uh, and we can't produce all the different versions of that online so yes it will be a case of you can look it up online by um using the, the it was a collection day lookup you can you can check or if you can't do that get in touch with uh, customer con customer services and they'll be able to hopefully send you a new one or confirm the dates for you over the phone and the original collections stay the same until we get to the very end of October. That's right, isn't it? And then the new collections start at the end of October. Yeah, so twenty six. Yeah, so over two over two weeks. Start, so obviously the they, the routes collections take place on different days. So once everyone's got the blue bags, which is happening over the next two weeks, and then gradually as those routes start getting actioned through, you know, from the twenty sixth of october the new service comes in over the, is it a case of over two weeks mickey or, or one week i guess by the time it rolls out to the different areas of mendip yeah i mean yeah it'll be over two weeks um that's the point of the, everybody's individual calendar so nothing changes yeah. this week exactly as normal nothing changes next week it's only from monday the 26th of october and that's where your individual calendar will tell you exactly when your recycling day is exactly when your rubbish day is and for a very small minority um they might be having a, an interim collection on a saturday yeah and that that saturday could be the 24th couldn't it so it could be uh, before uh, the rolling out of the new services so that right. nobody goes much longer before a collection than the than we would expect them to okay so that, that calendar uh, is important so yeah it, it, people need to get, get that and you know put it away somewhere safe stick it on the fridge put it in the drawer somewhere that you can refer back to it nice and easily yeah so if they've already thrown that into the recycling they can and ask for another one <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they can. I mean, I guess if you're if you're you know um, happy to do so, then check online because that information is being updated now. So you'll be able to search for your collection days. It'll show what they are now, and then the new you know post recycle more dates. So if you're happy to do that, we'd encourage people to do that. Uh, otherwise, you can request a replacement, and we'll you know get one out to you as soon as we can. And if people have a use a calendar on their computer on their phone, then they can download that, those days so they can got that reminder always there on their their phone or computer. Yeah, yeah. Through, through, again, through the website, and it just it will put itself into your phone or your laptop, and it'll ping up the day before saying, "Is it just a recycling this week, or is it recycling and refuse?" So it's quite a handy little tool. And your food bin still gets collected every week, I presume, with the recycling. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> what do people do um, with children in nappies? Um, I've had a few people that are quite concerned that their bin is already full at the end of two weeks. So they're a bit worried about getting to three weeks um, and in the summer months about it going smelly. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I think we understand that people might have a few concerns on that front but i guess it's worth starting by saying that when we trialed this it did work really well and we used you know families with children in nappies were part of that trial and it does work you know similar schemes work elsewhere in the country um uh, and i think a starting point is also obviously we are uh, in the bright blue bag like that that is a whole lot of additional a whole lot of additional recycling will be coming out of your bin and being collected every week so it does free up a lot of space in there um, but I guess the bottom line is if you are concerned, get in touch or um, get in touch because we can provide additional space if it's essential based on your various circumstances, how many people in the family and such like, and, and how many children you have in nappies. Uh, but 
we did find in when we did trials and they found elsewhere that even people who were concerned about that once they gave it a go it actually wasn't a problem because of all the stuff that's coming out of the bin and going into recycling so as, as much as possible we would ask people to give it a try first because you might find actually you you know your concerns are, are unfounded once you actually take start taking the additional stuff and putting it into recycling it does free up an awful lot of space in your big bin um and in those situations where uh, you know the concerns about smells i think our our advice is to double bag it and put it in the main bin and that does tend to again when we've seen that that didn't become an issue where it's tried elsewhere okay excellent um going to the blue bag um hmm. oh, what can you give me the size of that blue bag Sh show me what it is and how big it is <laughs> well yeah so this this is one of them um you can see it is 35 by 35 is the base. I mean, it's 50 centimeters tall. Um, it's really tough and robust. It's full of stuff at the moment. Um, and it's also got, it's got a, a, ba a weighted base made of rubber. So we've got a lot of questions about, oh my, you know, isn't the bag just gonna blow away when it gets a bit breezy? And it doesn't because the base is actually quite, you know, it gives it some substance. Uh, other concerns about, isn't all the stuff gonna blow out of the top? But that's why it's got a, a Velcro closed lid. So fix it there and fix it there and it works really well it's really difficult to get that lid you know it's not going to blow off in the wind so yeah it works really well similar bags similar dimensions and kind of same materials are used elsewhere and uh, you know they've worked well and uh, I, I can't remember if it was the same color but similar bag was used when we did the trials mickey i believe um again no complaints people found that actually as a container it worked really well and lends itself to the server you know light these light materials that are going to go in it it just works well in a bag so that kind of answers the question for why we're not having another container and we're having a bag because you can fasten the top and keep the items inside rather than them blowing out of the box i'm presuming i think that's certainly one of the reasons colin i can't uh, can you expand on why we went for the bag yeah the bag is uh well it's it's easier to pack away when it's uh, not in use it was the preferred container when we did the trials from families uh, and we did trial a couple of different sized containers and this this was the preferred one uh, in the trial area so that's why we've introduced it this time because it was so, what people wanted are these bags um washable um but i've had a few concerns for people saying that um you know you can rinse out your your tub um but is the bag able to rinse down yeah. because the, the bag's made of polypropylene. You could rinse it out. Uh, what we suggest is, of course, you rinse out your recycling before you put it in there so the bag doesn't doesn't uh, require cleaning very often. But you can certainly hose them out and give them a wash. They, uh, it won't damage them. Okay. Excellent. So it's kind of like waterproof then, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so what can you put into your blue bag? Have you got some examples of what you can put in your blue bag? Yeah, yeah. So the blue bag is for plastic bottles. So at the moment we already collect plastic bottles. Um, so that is, as you, you know, this sort of thing, sort of stuff we all have, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but importantly, this is the plastic pots, tubs, and trays, which is one of the you know the major new materials. So things like that but you get uh, meat or vegetables in so whatever the color so it could be black brown opaque clear you know all those different types all that sort of stuff uh yogurt pots um and it's not just kitchen based plastic so it's your shampoo cleaning liquid that sort of stuff um so all those plastics go in you can leave you can leave the tops on we do ask that you take off the kind of big chunky trigger mechanisms like that because they're they're more complicated and they've got bits inside them uh but your box standard things like this you can leave the tops on so they all will all go in and then also your tins and cans so sort of stuff you're already recycling so just tins whatever uh and aerosols like that and you can leave these spray nozzles on top as well so they go in the bag and then the last bit is foil just in case you don't know what foil looks like here's some foil uh and again <laughs> with all this stuff you've either give it a quick rinse you know you don't we're not asking people to scrub it you just give it a quick rinse to make sure you know, get rid of anything you know significant that's on it and then it goes you just rinse out your rinse out your cans this one's got the label peeled off you don't have to do that just give it a quick rinse and put it in um 
and that's it and um yeah so that's collected every week and i think you find if you once you start trying to put all that stuff in there you'll see that that bag does you know is going to account for a lot of additional space in your bin because it's all going once a week from your doorstep and some parish councils have been trying out the bag over the last couple mm. of weeks haven't they and and you know lots of feedback in terms of people surprised how much it does hold in terms of all that new plastic yeah. so if you've got um a huge amount of plastic and you're filling that bag up at, at, you know at, before the end of the week can you request a second bag you can yeah so with all our containers you can if you if you are regularly producing more than you can fit in those those recycling boxes you can ask for additional ones and the same will go for the blue bags i mean what, what we would ask is um you know there's lots of people who are very keen to start doing this uh, what we what would not particularly be helpful is storing up all of that plastic now so you've got a huge amount to kind of put out on the first collection because obviously this is a new service new routes you know they're getting you know crews getting ahead around this whole new new you know new collection regime so inundating it with a ton of you know massive spike of material st to start with won't be particularly helpful by all means if you want to gradually you know over a number of weeks clear out that cupboard where you've been storing it that's great or take it to the recycling sites uh, you know which already accept this material um but yeah what we what wouldn't be particularly helpful is a huge amount on the first day <laughs> right. so fill it up fill it you know fill it up to the top just uh don't 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 you know empty your shed of any uh plastic you've been storing away for the last three months and the other thing that's really important is to not put not put anything in that blue bag that isn't plastic or or metal for example glass we really don't want to see any of that in people's blue bags you can imagine once we've got a lot of it and you're putting it through a machine to deal with it if there's any glass in there it tends to to do lots of damage and and it's it's keeping those materials as separate as possible that's what's enabled us to so last year we kept 90 percent of all our recycling in the uk so um it really helps us do that so the plastic that goes on the top um so sometimes you get your punnets that are mm. cased in a in a almost like plastic bag kind of thing is that plastic being recycled as well or is that going into your wheelie bin that will go into your wheelie bin to uh, go off for uh, yeah. to be recovered energy from waste. Yeah, so it's uh, important. That you, we you take can't the... recycle film or anything, so it's and... important that's taken off and then put out with your refuse. Yeah, so things like bread bags, um, you know, crisp packets. There, it is really difficult to find anywhere to reprocess those. So we do ask that you're going to take. You know, it's this sort of stuff. That, that covers a, a meat package normally you need to take just rip that off and put it in your rubbish uh, and put that in the blue bag but um yeah so crisps um you know food pet food sachets are made of that sort of stuff um yeah what what we'd call flexible plastic i guess yeah right. and that that is the material which doesn't take up much volume actually yeah. so shouldn't be a problem in the, in the bin uh, and it will go off now to energy from waste so it won't go off to landfill oh okay so that's interesting uh information mm. pollen mm. yep did you um, want to explain colin and um, yeah, elaborate yeah, on that just give us a little background on that colin while we're here oh the the, the waste that we now collect from the uh, black bin or your refuse bin is no longer being taken to landfill it goes to a uh, a sorting area and then is, is taken up to Avonmouth and it goes to an energy from waste plant so we no longer put material through a landfill no. uh, so that generates some electricity and and heat uh, and the electricity kind of covers you know running the plant itself but also can be is then available to the national grid and then a little way down the line they're going to they're co-locating a plastics repro reprocessing plant next to that energy from waste facility up in Avonmouth so you end up so that stuff that can't be recycled goes towards either electricity or turning stuff that can be recycled into new products so it's a good kind of you know a big step forward excellent amazing uh, we've got a question from uh, Jeanette Baker on our comments um, saying in Bedfordshire they had orange bins for recycling, um, like the black bins. Um, is that something that you did consider for Somerset or? Yeah, so we looked at all of those options, both kind of in desktop studies and in kind of in, and in further work. Um, 
what when you mix everything together you can imagine you do that your neighbors do that the whole area does that and it all goes into the back of a truck it all goes off to a a plant called a, a MRF, a materials reprocessing facility where they then have to separate that out actually what you then find is a lot fair few people have sneaked some other materials in there so they lose quite a lot everything has got a bit mushed up and dirty if you like and actually so that means that the the carbon saving the environmental benefit from everything being together um, is much lower so the, the typically the glass that they'll be collecting there might just get ground down and used as ag aggregate so it still counts as recycling whereas the separate glass we're collecting goes back to be made into a glass bottle by and large so we did consider it and the reason we rejected it is in terms of carbon and in the environmental benefit it's a lot worse it would cost a lot more and also nationally the government are pushing towards more consistency across the country and they've made very clear that the separate collection that we do is their preferred model in fact somerset waste partnership was held up as the kind of exemplar in in that national strategy so three reasons really the environmental reason the financial reason and the fact that kind of we expect that national government is going to push everybody else to do it our way rather than the other way around if you like excellent um, yeah I, th I think it's worth pointing out that our material the somerset material is really really popular uh as a, a resource out in the industry which is why we can continue to recycle most of our uh, material in the uk where we collect it uh, co-mingled the quality would reduce and we 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 wouldn't have the end markets that we currently do potentially cost about an extra seven million a year as well on gate fees etc okay so quite a bit more costly then really yeah yeah um i did have a question on social media about eco bricks um and as to whether they would be recycled in the new scheme Any so, so an eco brick is normally a plastic bottle filled with lots of the different flexible plastics it might be plastic bags it might be pet food pouches those those kind of things so we couldn't take that in at the curbside recycling um because we, we can't take those kind of flexible plastics they're all different types of plastics or sometimes a laminate of plastic with metal so we can take the plastic bottles their lids we'll recycle them but we can't take an eco brick because it's full of full of that flexible plastic um yeah so they're they were really popular a little while ago i think that we're seeing their popularity wane a little bit as some people have, have realized actually it's quite hard to get one that's the right weight and the right density and if it isn't that then you know it's it's not useful and also there have been some concerns about if they are sent off to developing countries uh for use as building materials actually making sure that the right thing does happen to them so i mean what i would encourage people to do is probably use less of the flexible plastics if they can find alternatives reuse bags rather than put them in there and i think that's probably better for the environment uh than than, than creating eco bricks and as Colin said, um, stuff that does go in our rubbish bins in Somerset now does go to make energy rather than just go into a hole in the ground. Excellent. Uh, so when you say small batteries, what, what does that class as that you're collecting? And I see you're collecting those in a plastic bag. So do you get the plastic bag back? That is the plan. The crews should leave leave them behind. So by small, when we say small batteries, like small household batteries, so your your double A's, your triple A's, you know the things that power you know, most domestic, uh, you know, toys and gadgets or whatever you like. What it means is not you know car batteries or motorcycle batteries or those big those other big things. So little things like that, basically. And yeah, and they they are to they're to go into bags separately. I, aren't they i think <laughs> what i recall so That's separately right. in bags yeah and those carrier bags should yeah. be left behind by the crews yeah the carrier bags will be left behind sometimes people may want to put them out in little sandwich bags or that type of thing uh, and we would expect the crew to take that away with them rather than return it but carrier bags and that type of thing would be returned but and if a bag was reasons. reusable there's yeah, two sorry. reasons we're asking for that bella one is uh, and you'll see them occasionally, they still do happen, fires. So if those batteries, if especially lithium batteries, if they get wet, 
they can kind of spontaneously combust. So putting them in a bag helps keep them dry, helps keep everybody safe. Um, and it keeps them separate from other things. You can imagine with those small batteries, they'd very easily kind of maybe slip into something else or, or even worse, kind of, you know, fall down into the drain or something. We don't want them getting released into the, either the environment or getting mixed up with other materials that would stop us from recycling properly. Excellent. We have another question for batteries. Uh, will you take the smaller round batteries, which are used in things like watches and kitchen scales? And yeah, yeah. So any yeah. any kind of small battery, if we're just any like kind of small battery or yeah. anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What comes under small electrical items? It's essentially anything that you can fit in a carrier bag. So that's just a, a rule of thumb for size. It's basically anything that has either taken batteries or has, a, has had a plug, uh, you know, whether it's still got batteries in it or whether the plug is still attached. So an electrical item. And in terms of size, it's basically if you can fit it into a carrier bag, then, it's the, then, then we can take it. So obviously you can't, you know, a flat screen telly ain't going to fit into a carrier bag. It wouldn't be very practical for the crews to pick up. So, you know, it's lots, you know, kettles, toasters, uh, but also old phones and laptops and computers. If you can get it into a, a normal size carrier bag, then we should be able to take it away. Excellent. Um, I think that's kind of it for um, the questions I've got. So we have got um, 15 people watching. So if any of you want to put a question on, um, please feel free and we'll get them answered now. Um, if not, unless there's anything else that you guys have to say on the Recycle More project? No, I just hope everybody finds it as, as beneficial as the people in the trial did. Uh, it was very popular when we trialled it, and I'm sure everybody will, once they start using it, will see the benefits in it. It'll benefit us all and the environment. And it's, I think, you know, it is a bit of a change and every time, you know, whenever you people are asked to do something a bit different, you know, it takes a bit of effort, but it will soon, be, you know, we hope it will soon become just part of the routine. So, you know, the blue bag will just be one of those other things you fill up every week, like you do with your recycling at the moment. The first couple of times it might be a bit weird, uh, you know, a bit feel like a bit of an extra task, but pretty soon it will just become part of your normal routine. That's what we saw in the trials. That's what you know, there are about 16 other local authorities doing three weekly collections. That's all working well. There are some authorities that have even gone to four weekly rubbish collections, um, and that still works. So, you know, although we're, you know, one of the, uh, you know, we're not at the very forefront, we're not far behind, but it has been already proven to be working for, you know, that's a million and a half, million and a half households who are already getting three weekly collections similar to what we're doing. And there'd be no problem there. So understand there might be anyone's got a bit of initial concern. The kind of overriding kind of message is really just give it a give it a try because you might find and most people found that actually concerns they had to start with just didn't weren't borne out when they actually started using the service. So if they don't another quick question, if they don't mm. get their blue bag, if it's not delivered or it's gone missing, the neighbours pinched it or something, you know, how can they reorder another one? Yep. So you can go, you can reorder online. You go online uh, and they'll, uh, that, that, that'll be available, I think, from the 26th or at, at the moment. If you go online to what, the My Waste Services uh, drop down on our website, you can order uh, replacement bags. Um, and in the meantime, you can use the black box for the materials you would have put in your blue bag. So that's our advice for in the time being. Uh, so you can do it online or you can give us a call and we'll get one sent out to you as soon as we can. And again, when I say give us a call, that's the, your local district council, so MENDIP to start with. Um, I'll just, Samantha Norton has um, just popped up about the nappy issue. Um, so we have covered the nappy issue, Samantha, mm. in regards to, um, I don't, if you just want to quickly recap your suggestions for, for families with nappies um, for me. Yep. So... There, if you have a child in nappies and you've got concerns about a free weekly rubbish collection, um, you can request additional space. Uh, we would say that in when we've done trials and what and elsewhere, we've seen that even people with children in nappies who do have some concerns find that once they've given it a go, it actually works okay because as we kind of covered, the blue bag urgh, that's going to be gets collected every week with all these additional materials, all the stuff that goes in there ends up freeing up an awful lot of space. Things like this 
the light, but they take up a heck of a lot of space in the bin. It doesn't take many of these to start filling up a bin. So with all that going in there, it does free up a load of space in your bin. So you might find that actually all the nappy stuff fits in there fine, you know, three weeks worth of nappies. That's all actually fine. But if you are really, really worried or you try it and you find it isn't working, then you can get in touch with us. Uh, you know, we look at everybody's individual circumstances. Uh, we can provide additional space in the form of stickers that you can put on bags uh, to sit beside your, your main bin. Uh, but we only do that when it's really necessary. So it's, uh, but because, because what we find is when you're using the weekly recycling in it to, to its full extent, you know, making full use of it. There are very few people who actually need that extra capacity. But get in touch. If you are worried, do get in touch and someone will have a chat with you and we'll just establish, you know, what your circumstances at home, how many people in the house, how many children in nappies. Uh, and then we can decide whether it's, you know, a real necessity to have that additional space. Uh, but okay, coming back to that, that point though, by and large, people find it does work fine. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to, you know, depending on your individual circumstance, but give it a go. Uh, and then get in touch if you've still got concerns. Are you able to take foil-based shiny decorative wrapping paper in the black box? Mickey, can you help me with that one? I'm trying to remember. I don't think you can. Uh, uh, no, we'd, uh, we'd prefer that to go in. It, it gets in, it, it gets treated as a contaminant. So we'd prefer if you put that in your refuse bin. It's uh, These uh, combined materials are very difficult to recycle. So the foil and the glitter and et cetera on, on shiny wrapping paper, unfortunately, gets rejected at the reprocessor end. So we'd rather that went in the bin. Yeah, I'd just say last year, I don't know, I noticed that there was less of that on sale. I think a lot of retailers and shops and producers have realized the kind of environmental implications. So rather than just going, oh, I'll just produce some, some you know, wrapping paper that's kind of got some metal in it they'll actually think about the recyclability of that so and i guess that's the best way to tackle all of these things rather than just dealing with them when we've created the waste it's thinking about the things we're creating and buying in the first place but general wrapping paper without any foil on it you can take that in the recycling can you yeah yes yep. yes excellent Okay, I think that's it for our question. I think we might get cut off in a minute because we're getting to the end of our time. Um, so if there is any more questions, please feel free to put them in the comments box and we'll get those directed to Somerset Waste Partnership and hopefully get your questions answered. Um, if not, happy recycling, everybody, from the end of October. Great, thank, thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Great. Cheers. Lovely. Thanks.